testicular tumor, we have a 35-year-old male patient coming with uh, a testicular mass or a lift to grow mass with a single palpable testis. So very important, though it's a single palpable testis and an ultrasound, the gray mass appears to be undescended testis with solid cystic component, all right? So this will take us to the types of testicular cancer. So if, if this is a testis, it will have two different components. One component is the cellular component, which is called the germ cells, and also a stromal component in between. So that classifies the type of cancers into a, a, a germ cell tumor and also a stromal cell tumor. So germ cell tumor, we're talking about a few things such as seminoma. The commonest will be seminoma, which represents around 50% of the type of cancers, and also something called yolk sac tumor and teratoma, which is quite common as well, and choriocarcinoma. On the other side, for a stromal cell tumor, the two most common ones will be seminoma, uh, sorry, it will be um, leading cell tumor and Sertoli cell tumor and something called the granulosa cell tumor and finally could be mixed of the above structures. So to be honest, from those one, the most important one will be seminoma, as is the most common, teratoma, as it happened as well, and maybe choriocarcinoma, and we're going to ask a few questions about these different types of cancer. So the most important predisposing, predisposing factor for having testicular carcinoma is an undescended testis. An undescended testis is called cryptoorchidism. So that takes us to the definition of cryptoorchidism, which is a complete or pulture uh, failure of the testis to descend into the uh, 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 scrotum. So the testis will be intra-abdominal. Due to that, there'll be higher risk of having cancer, which is almost 100% risk. The patient might have cancer if we didn't deal with that. That's why we can do testicular fixation down to the, uh, um, the scrotum. And if this didn't work, we can do even prophylactic or colectomy for the patient. So, undescended testis will increase the risk of cancer by three to five folds uh, um, in male patients. Our management, usually, if you remember for uh, the breast carcinoma, would do triple assessment, include the history and the examination and the imaging, and finally the biopsy as well. It's very similar in testicular cancer as well, so we need to do triple assessment, and that includes the history, detailed history, and the examine the testis and the uh, um, draining, draining lymph nodes as well. We also need to do some bloods, and this will include the tumor markers, particularly important tumor markers, are lactate dehydrogenase and alpha feature protein, and the human chorionogonadotropin, which is typically found in uh, sensitotrophoblast or cytotrophoblast cells with the choriocarcinoma. And then we can do imaging for our patient, and the imaging is mainly the CT cap for identifying the paraortic lymph nodes, which is the lymphatic drainage of the testis. And finally, we can do a biopsy, whether it's from a lymph node or prophylactic or colectomy, and sending it for pathology. All right? Then the patient will need to be discussed in MDT and to discuss our further management. So we send the samples for pathology, and it turns out to be teratoma with positive Martian and lymphatic invasion. And this is the grading system for the patient. So we're going to explain this to the, to, to the family, that this is a cancer, all right? Positive margins means this is incomplete resection, and this means it's metastasizing anywhere, or we can explain it in layman terms that it has spread uh, to some lymph nodes or some glands in the body. So where teratoma is spread first, usually the paraortic lymph nodes can go to the lugo regional areas, the serological markers that we can do, like we explained, or the tumor markers, alpha feature protein, lactate dehydrogenase, and the human chorionogonadotropin. They are quite important for establishing the, uh, uh, to evaluate a stecular mass and doing a staging of this tumor, and also to assess the tumor burden and monitoring the response to the treatment. Post-operative, the patient had a hematoma, what are the stages of hematoma resolution? So in the first week, the uh, macrophages will migrate and it will lead to a lysis of the tumor. And finally, the fibroblast will develop uh, uh, to um, replace this hematoma. A few months, the patient has a small pneumothorax. This is one of the sites of metastasis of testicular cancer to the lung and the pleural space as well. Metastasis, we defined this before, which is the ability 
of the tumor cells to, to survive and grow at a site that is distant from the, city, the site of origin. Could be local, lymphatic, and also hematogenous spread as well. So the same patient had shortened to breath and came with paraortic lymph node compressing in the renal artery and vein and also shortened to breath and they had PE. So the reason why the, this patient had PE, so we explained this before, for any clots development, we need to think about the Verkau triad. And this is hypercoagulable state and also immobilization or venous stasis and also endothelial injury. In our patient, I would assume that they are in hypercoagulable state. This is mainly dehydration and an active cancer. And our patient have an active cancer. Venous stasis, and this is due to compression on the veins. As you see here, it's compressing on the renal veins and could potentially be the, the inferior vena cava since we have paraortic lymph nodes as well. Choriocarcinoma, it's a highly malignant germ cell tumor. So try to use the classification that we mentioned at the start. So this is a germ cell tumor and histologically contain two different types, cytotrophoplast and trophoplast, which is present basically in the placenta in a female. So that's why here we can do a pregnancy test for the patient, for the male patient, and it can be positive due to production of human chorionic gonadotropin. The tumor markers for it, like we said, beta HCG, which is a pregnancy test basically. So a male with a positive pregnancy test could be a choriocarcinoma. The most common testicular tumor in male patient more than 60 years old is actually non-hodgical lymphoma, and it can also come with papillary thyroid tissue and GIT adenocarcinoma, as it does have three germ cell lines.